Hey everybody, I'm going to give you a few examples and some tips on what to expect when you're approaching a new store, whether you're a clothing designer or a jewelry owner. Uh, these are things to want to, you want to keep in mind. So uh, th some things you want to have prepared are a line sheet or a catalog, which show what you have on hand and what you will have for the next year or next few months. Some examples of your work that are already done and completed. So if it's a t-shirt already printed and labeled, and have your business card attached to your catalog and everything's good to go same thing with your jewelry you have it all labeled and priced and all that um, things you want to be prepared for when you're approaching the store are the availability of the buyer um, sometimes they aren't always there so be prepared to leave an example or uh, samples with them and business cards as well um, a buyer is the person who makes the decision to either purchase your item up front via wholesale or uh, deal with you on consignment. Consignment, you only get paid until um, when they sell the product. Uh, and that's more common what happens when you're a brand new brand. Versus wholesale, they'd be taking a bigger risk on a brand they're not familiar with, buying it up front, and then they have to worry about selling it after. Um, dealing with employees, you don't often always deal with the buyer up front. Often they're just a person working behind the desk. Um, who may be big-headed or on a power trip. So don't get discouraged by that. Just ask for a manager, and you want to get a hold of a buyer. Um, the manager may not know the buyer number or email, but they can direct you to a corporate office who can. So just keep being persistent until you find the person you need to talk to. Um, you can always schedule an appointment to meet with the buyer later if they are close by and aren't in like a different state or whatnot. And you can show them products up, up front. So often what will happen is uh, buyers like to fill the actual samples of your product. And some are real picky about brands. So like American Apparel or Bella or Next Level or Gildan or Jerseys or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, Anvil, like they they vary on each store. So when you're approaching a boutique, they often like softer fabrics and like thinner kind of t-shirts or whatnot. If you're approaching like a skate shop, they kind of like more uh, loose fitting clothing, a little baggier, a little heavier, and it just varies on the store that you're going to. So keep that in mind. Know your product, because um, often what will happen also is when you talk to a buyer, you'll negotiate on price. Um, so they'll try to talk you down on the price. They're still going to sell it for their top price that they want to, but how much you get paid really depends on your negotiating skills. So. If they want the top quality shirts and the soft fabrics or whatnot, then you can negotiate about that. Know your product. Know what the inks that you use if you are printing. So know the difference between Plastisol and water-based inks and, you know, and uh, the heat presses and using discharge inks. These are all things that really do come into play. For example, a store I recently approached uh, attempted to talk me down in my price. Uh, but I had a friend with me uh, who's a, a busty woman, um, and his whole selling, or oh, his point was the product that I had at the time, which is actually this bear and this red star. I'm not going to mention their name, but um, it was a, it's just, this is a woman's shirt. So the argument he was making was when a woman would wear the shirt, the image would warp. And unless they're wearing a size that's completely wrong, that wasn't the case at all, and me having my friend there wearing the shirt as a model definitely helped me argue that point. And be prepared to walk away. So dealing with that and just the, the whole vibe of the store, I can live with that no. So I walked away from that and walked down just uh, not too far away from another store. And it worked out perfectly. I ended up getting into that store. So always, you know, know your product, know your quality, be confident in your product, and be prepared to walk away. It's okay if you don't get into that store. There are others who will accept your product. And later on down the line, when you do build up your product, they'll come back to you. And then you have the, the choice if you want to be in there or not. So be prepared for no's because they're going to be often, you know, they're going to come often in the business. It's just what it is. Um, but you'll eventually get a yes, you know. Um, even when there are stores that you want to approach and want to get in and maybe they're friendly and the buyer isn't available at that time, just be persistent. Stay in their ear. 
you know, call in every maybe, you know, three weeks or so, check it in, send an email just to see what they're, you know, if they're available. Do they have any space available in the store? Because what will often happen is they buy their products from uh, venues early on, so spaces are really limited. So you want to get in there and you want to stay in the back of the head like, oh, well, this guy or this woman's been persistent and keeps calling me and emailing me. You don't want to harass them, but you want to, you know, be like a fly in their ear. You want to just be in the back of their head like, well, let me just check out their brand and see what this is about. Because eventually they'll they'll sit down with you or they'll check it out. And if it's really good and they like it, then you'll get in there. So nothing's really given easy either in this business. You have to be persistent with it and you have to really go for it. Um, that's something I had to learn along this way, just trial and error. And this all will come with experience as well. You also want to set a price for yourself. Because like I mentioned in my little example, um... They'll also try to talk you down in your price. So, you know, some stores sell their shirts for 30 bucks, for $28, for 20 bucks even. You just know the price that you're willing to sell your product for. So if you're not comfortable with going below, you know, $10, you'll be losing out or whatever it may be, um, then don't go there. You know, that you can walk away with that. That's fine. So you want to know what your margin is, where you'll still make a profit, and be prepared to walk away from a store that's not a willing to, to uh, negotiate and work with you. Besides, be friendly and confident in your product and, and know it because um, people should believe in your product. You have to believe in your product, too, for them to. But um, you want to go out there and get your brand out there. So be prepared to go to events and go to shows and talk to artists and talk to producers and, and talk to DJs and people who are out there networking all the time. And talk to them about your product and what you're trying to do. Be, uh, have some examples on hand. Maybe you want to give away to them and have them wear and support your brand too. Uh, these are all things to help cross-promote. You want to promote them and that you want them to promote you as well. So have some examples on hand for that. Give them out to DJs. Maybe you have old shirts, an older design that didn't sell so well for you um, initially starting off. Use that as a promotional piece. You know, everything that you create, you can use as some kind of item for promotion in your business. Recycle what you have on hand, you know. You don't want to lose out on any products and any opportunities. You want to build good relationships with people, build a good rapport, and go from there. Things that are just all learned along the way. So be prepared to make mistakes and learn, too. Um... The whole point of my business is to work with independent individual artists and be able to get their their artwork out there and seen by others. Um, so if I don't do that, then I feel like I failed you, and I feel you should do the same in, in promoting the brand as well. Um, so be persistent with your brand. Believe in your brand. Find those who do who feel the same and who are willing to help you out, and you help them out. It's not just a one-way street. You know, you have to be able to go out your way and help out an artist promote his album, his project, or uh, uh, maybe a videographer needs some uh, clothing for their the next video shoot. So be prepared to give some stuff away for that. But also, you have to promote their their music and their videos. So it's a it's a mutual respect. It's a mutual appreciation for each other's artwork. Um, but yeah, so that was my soapbox kind of. Uh, some little tidbits in there. Hopefully something helped you. If you have any questions, please, please, please contact me. Uh, Chris Allen Apparel, LLC dot, uh, uh, at gmail.com. And uh, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, stay tuned. Subscribe. Like. Follow me on Instagram. Chris Allen Apparel. That's K-R-I-S-A-L-A-N Apparel underscore on Instagram. Um, and also Twitter, and uh, check out my website. I'm always updating new things, just promoting uh, different artwork on there. Um, I'll talk to you guys soon, and I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments. I'll holla at you later.